Good Tuesday afternoon, everybody. I'm meteorologist Tim Pandages here with your tropical update, and we still have a lot to talk about. Two hurricanes, two tropical storms, and two tropical waves, one of which could become our next named system. Today is September 15th, 2020. Before we get into things, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And at the end of this video, if you liked it or if you learned something, hit that like button as well. All right, here's a look at the overall basin. Still extremely active right now. We have Sally. Paulette, Teddy, Vicky, another wave coming off the coast and the remnants of what used to be tropical storm Renee. Teddy here, it's going to be an interesting one. We're going to spend a little bit extra time on that storm as we get a little bit later in this video. First, let's start things off with our tropical trivia today. The question is a backup list of names for use during very active hurricane seasons is the Greek alphabet used when we deplete all the 21 names that are set aside before each season, right? It was only ever used during one season. I want you to tell me what year that was. The answer at the end of this video. All right, let's start things off here with a very imminent threat to the United States. In fact, already impacting the United States, parts of the Gulf Coast. This is Hurricane Sally. Now, the latest update from the Hurricane Center at 2 o'clock shows Sally a bit weaker. It peaked at a Category 2 hurricane with winds over 100 miles per hour yesterday, downgraded to a Category 1. I do not want you to look at this and say, oh, it's just a cat one. It's been downgraded. It's weaker, no longer a big threat. That is not the case at all. The overall threats for disastrous impacts has not gone away. Why? Look at its slow movement. Two miles per hour. It's virtually stalled. You can outwalk this storm, and that means a prolonged impact from storm surge four to seven feet in some locations, particularly Mobile Bay could see some of the worst of it, and widespread flash flooding. With the slow movement, water is the big story here. 30 inches of rain could fall in some areas. Where have we seen that before? Remember Harvey, slowed to a virtual crawl. Remember Florence, that brought catastrophic flooding to portions of North and South Carolina, and that was just a category one. And then, of course, we had Dorian that slowed down and virtually stalled out over the Bahamas. That led to, obviously, much more disastrous impacts as a Category 5. But just keep that in mind right now. Here's how it looks on satellite imagery. A very uh, photogenic storm, you could say. You can see that spiral in the atmosphere. It's sitting just to the south of Mobile, Alabama, only just a couple dozen miles offshore. I want to show you water vapor imagery here because this shows us dry air and moist air. A lot of dry air on the western side of this storm, and that is going to drive a huge or very sharp cutoff in areas that see a ton of rainfall, like six inches or more, in areas that see virtually nothing. And in fact, portions of New Orleans and even points west of there, sunny skies out there today and aren't going to see likely any rain at all. Just a breezy day out there with most of the rain, in fact, all the rain off to the north and to the east of that storm center out there right now. You can also start to see if I turn around here and go off towards the side, you can see uh, that there is already starting to see some indications of some wind shear developing coming in out of the west southwest, and that is going to help to tilt the system and again keep all of that major impacts on the east northeast side of that storm as it starts to take a more northerly turn here in the short term. Here's a radar imagery coming in out of Mobile. This is a four hour loop here, folks. And notice the storm center, which you can see there clearly on radar imagery is barely moving. Yeah, two miles per hour or stalled, not really a big difference there. Most of the heaviest rains and strongest winds are still just south of the coastline, but it's not going to stay that way forever. This is going to lift its way slowly north and likely landfalling somewhere near Mobile Bay or possibly just west of there as we get into tomorrow morning. So still a lot of time between now and landfall with its very, very slow movement. In fact, here's the latest forecast track from the Hurricane Center as of 2 o'clock. Again, a Category 1 storm, 80 mile per hour winds, but those gusts well over 100 miles an hour. As we go farther out in time, we see that northerly turn. It makes landfall potentially right around sunrise tomorrow morning on Wednesday. Still a Category 1 with 80 mile an hour winds, and then takes more of a northeasterly trajectory as it moves over land away from its heat source, its energy source, so it will rapidly start to weaken down to a remnant low by as early as Friday morning as it moves into Georgia. Of course, at this point in time, there's still a ton of moisture with this, so rainfall throughout the entire southeast could lead to flash flooding. All right, recent landfalls in both Alabama and Mississippi. It's been a while, especially for areas 
in Alabama. It hasn't been the uh, hurricane landfall there since 2004. And that was with Ivan. That was a category three storm. If we do see this shift maybe a little bit farther to the west at landfall and it makes it into Mississippi, the last time there was a landfalling uh, hurricane was 2017. That was Nate. That was a category one hurricane. So as I mentioned with Sally, the bottom line here is it's all about the water. I don't really want you to focus on the category because water, flooding, drowning, storm surge, biggest cause of death with tropical systems. So a slow moving storm means prolonged storm surge inundation and then fresh water flooding, rainfall from the sky could approach 30 inches in some locations. We're gonna be measuring this in feet and not inches in some locations. So let's look at the wind field first of all, because this is gonna be driving that storm surge, especially to the east of the system with the onshore flow. Right now at the onset, we have hurricane force winds extending out into this, a red half circle here, semicircle. The orange is gonna be 58 mile an hour winds. And that yellow circle, the largest is the extent of the tropical storm force winds. As it moves inland over Dauphin Island, Mobile Bay potentially, again, this is all onshore winds piling the water up into Mobile Bay. Mobile looking at some really disastrous flooding here from storm surge as it moves inland. And then as it moves over land, we start to see the uh, hurricane force winds contract as well as the 58 mile per hour winds and eventually the tropical storm force winds as well, moving well inland off towards the north and northeast. Watches and warnings. Well, pretty much all warnings out there now. They have been discontinued farther to the west uh, of New Orleans but have been extended a little bit farther to the east out through areas like Panama City and portions of the Panhandle uh, in Florida. On top of that, too, we have the storm surge warnings that are up for a large area. Now, these areas outside here aren't really under that hurricane warning anymore, but they're going to be watching that storm surge on the back side of things as winds shift and come in over Lake Pontchartrain. It could have some uh, New Orleans area, see some potential storm surge there. But really, the brunt of the activity and the highest storm surge inundation is going to be here along the track and just to the east of it. Again, dependent on exactly where that track is, but it's looking like Mobile, Mobile Bay, maybe even over to uh, Pensacola could have some pretty good storm surge uh, totals. Not good, pretty high storm surge totals. On top of that, as I mentioned, if the areas that are along the immediate coast don't get drenched by the storm surge, it's going to be more widespread for the heavy rainfall that's going to be persistent for a day, day and a half, maybe even potentially two days. So this is just one of the models saying here that we could see over 15 to 20 inches. Localized areas certainly could see over two feet, even extending to two and a half feet to 30 inches. So that means flash flooding is likely in a large area through most of central and southern Alabama as you get into the panhandle of Florida and even as you get over towards Atlanta as we head into Thursday and Friday as the remnants of that storm moves over your direction. All right, let's talk briefly about what's going on with Paulette. Paulette was a hurricane and made landfall over Bermuda early, early Monday morning as a Cat 2. 105 still is a Cat 2, but it's racing on off towards the north and is starting to see that transition and losing its tropical characteristics. It's going to become extra tropical here in the next 24 hours as it moves to a higher latitude and into the North Atlantic, racing off to the north as well. Look at that forward speed. By as early as Wednesday and Thursday, we're already well into the North Atlantic before it falls apart to a remnant low and then travels off towards the south. So nothing to worry about, no impacts to land. Now let's get over to Teddy. Right now, this is just a tropical storm. Higher end tropical storm, 65 mile per hour winds, need 74 or greater to become a category one hurricane. But just looking at this storm now, especially in the last couple of frames. So first, let me refresh your memory what we're looking at. This is the infrared satellite imagery. And this gives us a gauge on the intensity of thunderstorms. So we're looking at here with the colors is the temperature of the cloud tops. The higher the clouds, the stronger the thunderstorm, the colder the cloud tops, okay? The colder cloud tops are indicated by the shades of white and black. And notice in the last couple of frames here, you see kind of a pulsation of convection popping on up. That shows us this storm is on its way to intensifying, it is already intensifying. And if you look at it, it has that look. We've talked about this before. Laura had that look. Sally had that look. This also has it, and this is forecast to become a major hurricane. Right now, its location, it's well to the east of Barbados, over 700 miles. And thankfully, this storm is not moving due west. If it was, this would be a real problem for the Leeward and Windward Islands. But for the moment, the forecast is for to avoid 
the Windward and Leeward Islands, and most of the Caribbean. I'm going to show you that track here in just a second. But here, once again, is the visible satellite imagery. 65 mile per hour winds. You can almost see there it looks to be an eye beginning to form, and it's not even yet a hurricane. So this will likely become a hurricane either later today or very early tomorrow morning as we get a little more uh, data on it. But there's the forecast track on it becoming a Category 3 hurricane. Winds getting up to 125 miles per hour by this weekend. Now, this is the extent of the five-day forecast cone. It's the cone of uncertainty. The farther out you get in time, the bigger the cone gets. That's because the uncertainty is much greater. But see this little dot right here? That's Bermuda. As we go farther out in time past five days, Bermuda needs to watch this because this could be a threat coming dangerously close to the island again for the second time in two weeks. So we'll have to watch here what Teddy does. I'm going to show you the computer models. Here's the GFS Ensemble. We've used this plenty of times before. This is the GFS model run 21 separate times with members. Uh, we changed the initialization just a little bit to get a different outcome. And you can see all of the members here, you see Bermuda is right in there. All of them, the majority of them are to the east of the island. We'll see if that holds. But again, there's a lot of time between now and then. And some models outside of the GFS do show the track a little bit farther off towards the west as we get into the next week. So this certainly bears watching. The other tropical models here, this is about as far out as I go. Some of them certainly do start to uh, point to some impacts coming towards Bermuda by next week. All right, behind Teddy, we have Vicky. This is going to be a forgettable storm because it's not going to impact any land and it's going to be short lived. You can see it's really struggling from some wind shear. Why? It's not too far away from Teddy. The outflow from Teddy is creating some southwesterly wind shear. That's pretty much blowing all the tops off the thunderstorms that are developing with Vicky. And you can see the track here not doing anything. It's going to become a remnant low by as early as tomorrow night and then just peter on out in the middle of the Atlantic. Yep, so there's that one. All right, Eye on the Tropics, those names, 20 names so far. We have one left before we're out of names. And we go over to the Greek alphabet. The last name on the list is Wilfred. Is there any potential we could see Wilfred developing in the short term? The answer is yes. We've seen a very robust African easterly wave train coming off the coast of Africa. And uh, we have one more here. This is Invest 98L. Within the next two days, 50% chance of development, but higher within five days as it moves farther towards the west. 70% chance that this gets the name Wilfred. And then after that, we're going over to the first name in the Greek alphabet, which is Alpha. That leads us to our trivia answer for today. What year, what was the only season that we resorted to the Greek alphabet? Well, that was in the historically active, most active season on record, 2005. 27 name storms that year. We used six names from the Greek alphabet, the most out there on record. So very interesting to see if we get there this year. Again, it's only September 15th. We've got a lot of time to go between now and the end of the season on November 30th. All right, that's the latest on uh, the tropics out there. If you have any questions in between this today and the next video, you can always find me on social media. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, and I'm on Twitter. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday.